Hello everyone, my name is Ritesh and today we will discuss current affairs topic and today's topic is air sports policy, right? So, uh, this topic is important, why? First, because this has been recently released, the draft policy basically of national air sports, right? So, uh, it's been relevant, you have, you must have seen the, these policies, these draft uh, acts in your newspapers, in your editorials, right? And uh, it's not just about what we are giving here right now, right? In sports policy, national sports policy, there are so many conditions, right? Uh, which, uh, which have to be fulfilled before implementing such kind of things in our country, right? And if you see these topic as, your exa as an examination point of view, you will find the questions related to the ministries, questions related to the sports, right? You will go back, you have to go back to the static parts of these kind of policies, these kind of acts. For example, I, uh, today we'll talk about draft national air sports policy, right? So the, uh, the, uh, the act, the policy main, the basic idea behind this policy is that uh, we have to introduce such kind of things in our country to encourage youth population. We have so many cultures in our, in our uh, nation and because we have so many youth population in and around here, we'll, we want to develop uh, air sports as a as an adventure sports as a very frequent thing in our nation, right? So these things are very straightforward. These will, uh, these things will be mentioned in your objectives, significance, or the features of the national uh, air sports policy. But what you have to understand is that for which ministry the sports uh, thing is related to? What are the games that are being involved in this policy? Right? What are the authorities that are uh, that are drawing powers from these kind of act? And if this act will be implemented in the near future, what are the states? What are the major states that will have benefit from these uh, this policy? Right. So these kinds uh, these things are also relevant for your examination point of view because CLAD or island won't ask questions directly from you right they won't give you direct questions right so uh, that is why we have to uh, research one just one basic level research about the whole topic and then we, uh, you'll uh, good to go right so this was the whole overview of this topic now let us come back to the topic and let's discuss what we will uh, explain in this video right so first we'll discuss why this national air sports policy was in news right then we'll discuss the key points of the policy the main features of the policy right we'll discuss all the uh, all the relevant things of policy in this topic then we'll discuss the objective of policy right now if there is if there's an act that will be uh, implementing in near future then there must be some significance some objective of that act right before enacting such kind of act the ministry the person the members involved must give some kind of objective behind the act so we'll discuss the objective of the policy and because there are questions related to that too right because CLAT asks such kind of question what are the features what are the objectives of these kind of things right and if you won't go through these kind of topics then you'll miss what is the basic difference between the two objectives right if, uh, you'll get confused uh, in those options in your paper right so uh, we'll have clear understanding of the policy's objective then we'll discuss the significance of this policy and last we'll discuss the government initiative related to the air sports and all kind of things right so let us start with this topic first why it was in news right <coughs> so first let us start with the essentials right now what is this essential right so this in this topic i'm discussing the essentials of this act right of this sports uh, you can't implement air sport uh, before implementing air sports policy. You have to critically analyze the situations, right? A country is in or the main uh, essentials uh, before enacting such kind of act in our country, right? If, if, uh, for example, if there's a air sports and what if, if, for example, let's give just another example. Suppose uh, 
if there's a F1 racing involved, right? And you have to, um, you have to like uh, start a competition of F1 racing and all. It's just an example. So you need such kind of space, right? In the in the area where you are going to organize such kind of event, or you need such kind of cars or such kind of expertise, right? So these kind these are the things that are essentials for starting or organizing such kind of event, right? So that that's how I'm saying that before enacting such kind of policies, you also have to enact you have to uh, take all the essentials that are being involved in this policy right that are being involved not just with the policy but the air sports too right so what are the essentials first let us uh, understand this thing first is large geographical expansion right uh, in see the first essential of these kind of sports air sports is that the large ex geographical expansion and which is being fulfilled by India because we as a country we have a huge large geographical expansion we have so many hilly areas which is the second condition that is hilly areas condition so uh, for example if you uh, go to the map of India you'll see that there are so many hilly areas right in north in south in east you'll you'll notice hilly areas there so we have a big big opportunity over these areas to uh, organize such kind of sports over there right so second is fulfilled now third is clear sky condition now if you are, if you want to start organize uh, air sports for uh, air sports for example paragliding and all so you need to have a clear sky right you need uh, the weather conditions must be fulfilled before such kind of things to happen right so clear sky is one such condition and because in india there are 8 to 10 months we have a clear sky condition, right? So the third condition is also being fulfilled. Now, fourth one is the youth population. Now, these kind of sports, air sports, is, is a type of adventure sports, right? And these kind of things are attracted to the population which are very youthful, right? And uh, if we take an example of India, we have so many youth population right now in our country, right? So that is why these kind of sports will get adopted will get uh, will get a huge support from the population of our country too right then last one is the growing culture right we adopt such kind of things and because we have a vast diversity of culture over the, over in the in our country so yeah you can include all these essentials and you can take all the essentials before the act come into place right so these are the essentials that we have discussed again i'll discuss uh, again i'll summarize this first one is the large geographical expansion second one is the hilly areas condition and third one is the clear sky condition now these three are the most important essentials otherwise these three are just for india because we have a growing culture and youthful population right so just remember this just you will have a, a i discussed this uh, essentials only because you do understand the whole air sports thing right why uh, these kind of uh, sports are uh, happening in india right so that is why you discuss the essentials now let us discuss <coughs> why this is in news right firstly you'll need to uh, first thing that you uh, that uh, you'll come to the point that uh, because this national air sports policy was recently launched that is why it is in news right it's correct now uh, there are so many features that are being involved in this whole process so let us discuss this uh, thing one by one <coughs> now first one is two tier governance structure for air sports in the country now this sports policy talks about the two tier governance uh, structure for air sports in our country now what are the two tiers structure in this uh, 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 in this policy right what are the two tier governance structure first one is the apex governing body which is known as air sports federation of india right so you have to remember this thing because it is very important as per the national air sports policy because it air sports federation of india is the apex governing body right next Second one is the associations for each air sport, right? So you'll have to you have to understand that uh, in in if, if we are saying that air sports, we are drawing so many 
वी आर गिविंग एन अम्ब्रेला थिंग फॉर दैट एंड वी इंक्लूड सो मेनी स्पोर्ट्स रिलेटेड टू एयर राइट सो दीज ऑल काइंड ऑफ स्पोर्ट्स विल बी देयर so we'll need an association for each kind of sports each different sports will need an association right so that is why we are saying two tier governance structure first one is the apex governing body which is basically known as air sports federation of india and second one is the association for each air sport right now talking about the apex governing body which is basically air sports federation of india now it is an autonomous body under the ministry of civil aviation just like i have said before this topic that if you have ever uh, came across with such kind of themes such kind of uh, policy act or report right anything related to that or even scheme government there are so many government schemes that are being launched by government of india or even some kind of ministries right different kind of ministries so first thing you have to uh, understand that even uh, first whenever you read a scheme just go back to the ministry that it is involved with right which ministry launched that thing which uh, for example if a report is being released now which organization right which organization has uh, recently launched that thing right which organization released these kind of things so you have to just do one basic research over any topic right especially related to schemes or reports you have to do this <coughs> right so as i was talking about asfi which is air sports federation of india right so it is the autonomous body under ministry of civil aviation again you have to remember the ministry of civil aviation uh, and why because again it is involved with the air sports so it comes under the ministry of civil aviation aviation right then now this policy it will provide governance over various aspects of air sports including regulation certification competition awards and penalties now this policy will cover all the things that will be that will be involved with this air sport right uh, from organizing an event from even uh, the registration of such kind of things to giving penalties if you have uh, if you have done something wrong all will be covered under this draft national air sports policy so for example regulation certification competition award and penalties all these things will be involved in this particular policy right then the next feature is each association like i have said that there will be each association for each like every associ every sport we have an association for that right so each association will lay down its safety standards itself right so this is the duty of the association itself that they have to uh, determine they have to uh, even release what kind of safety standards uh, they are, they'll provide or what uh, what will be the x factor behind this right the safety standards must be there right next they will specify the disciplinary actions to be taken in ca case of non compliance right so now the next feature is that this policy will specify the disciplinary actions to be taken in non compliance like i have said they will uh, they will give us penalties in case of non compliance so the policy will cover uh, all the they will do all these kind of things in case of non compliance in case of anything wrong done to anyone under this uh, whole thing right so this uh, policy will cover all these things next is that the penal action will be covered by the asfi now what is the asfi that is why i was saying that it is very important uh, uh, in this policy that air sports federation of india because first thing that the policy itself says that it is the apex governing body right and the penal actions will be taken by the this uh, federation right so this is very important asfi now you have to remember this because penal action will be taken by the asfi itself right next is that the popular air sports attraction can be declared as a control zone for air sports right so this policy says that if you want to uh, enact such kind of thing in a place right uh, for example for example i've said that b billing in himachal pradesh gangtok in sikkim hadapsar in maharashtra 
and Wagamon and Kerala. So the, these are the places, right, where you have everything fulfilled for such kind of sports to happen, right. So government will do, uh, gov what government will do under this act? They will declare these places as control zone areas, right. So uh, so that uh, government will uh, government will get easily access to uh, regulate such kind of things and actually uh, for classifying such place as a control zone uh, the first thing will happen is that the safety uh, uh, standards right so if if there's a if these places will be designated as a control zone Right, for air sports, then all the safety standards, all the precautionary measures will be taken there and uh, sports will happen in a very safe environment, right? So that is why they are saying that they will designate these kind, these places as control zone for air sports, right? And it is the, actually the need uh, right now because uh, so, these places are very dangerous also, right? So you have to take all these precautionary measures before enacting such thing or even before organizing such kind of big events there, right? <clears throat> Next is government says uh, in the policy itself that they will allow import of air sports equipment without any import duty, right? So this is the major step of government uh, in this area that they are saying that they will allow import of air sports equipment without any import duty see i think for the coming years still they, they will allow import of these kind of equipments without any import duty but with the coming years they will uh, actually uh, starting uh, they will start doing uh, they'll start actually uh, taking import duty after some years in uh, so that they the, these kind of sports will get developed in our country then they'll uh, take duty as such right so for uh, but right now they are saying that they will allow import duty uh, they'll allow import of all these equipments without any import duty right now next one is that the long term funding for development from corporate investor sponsor savings right so in this kind of uh, in these kind of things for development of such kind of big events for development of such kind of air sports in our country you have to take funds from all over the place right so this this is uh, the government is saying that the long term funding for development of such kind of sports in our country will come from corporate investors sponsors events how i can give you an example for uh, just like an uh, just take an example of ipl so if ipl is happening in our country government is not spending any money on this right all these money comes from the sponsors right from the events from the ads they are generating right so these are these kind of things generate so much money that they don't need any government support from that right because i uh, the basic example is is of I, ipl you can even notice these things that if they are uh, in ipl players are wearing t-shirts they are wearing actually uh, the jersey of their team so in those jerseys everywhere you can see the ads the advertisement of in various companies so they get money from that those kind of things so this is why they are saying that the long term funding uh, for development of air sports come from these kind of areas uh, too right then government is saying that the rationalized gst rates on air sports equipment to five percent or less so they are also saying that they'll rationalize gst rate on air sports equipment to five percent or less right so these are the main object these are the main features of this policy right you have to remember all these features Right? Why? Because first thing is it will first thing it will save your time from reading comprehension in your exam. Right? Because all these things will be there in a, just a paragraph size uh, paper. Right? That's it. Or uh, the details will be the same. So uh, if you are aware of these kind of things before that, it will be beneficial for you to save time there right and you'll spend the time you're spending on gk in some area itself right so these th these are the basically content for your yeah, air sports policy now after features let's discuss the objectives of this policy because see uh, last year even uh, clat asked objective of such kind of thing 
right so objective is important just you, you just need to read and that's it uh, you'll remember all these things so first objective of this policy is the vision of the policy is to make india one of the top air sports nation by 2030 see we are right now in 2022 and within eight years nine years or within 10 years the vision is to make india top air sports nation right so this is the vision this is the objective of this policy first you have to remember the date itself 2030 the vision say so this is important right now it says uh, the objective uh, the second objective is also to organize such kind of things to uh, uh, to uh, to organize such kind of things in a very safe affordable accessible enjoyable and sustainable way right so they are saying we are organizing these kind of events and we are organizing these kind of events in a very safe and safe accessible enjoyable and sustainable environment right so they are saying these kind of things next that the policy seeks to leverage India's potential for air sports and places a strong focus on ensuring international best practices in safety. So they are saying, again, the safety standard is one such issue uh, in these kind of sports, right? So they are actually ensuring everyone that we will take every possible safety standards to happen uh, these kind of uh, to organize these kind of uh, sports in our country right even in, uh, they are ensuring that in, uh, we will have international best practices in safe in standard of safety right then they are saying that uh, it will come under the art nirbhar bharat abhiyan right this is also important now let's discuss the significance and then we'll discuss the government initiatives related to that right so what again what are the significance of this policy what benefit you will get from if if such kind of policy will get enacted in near time right so first one now first one is the schools and colleges will be encouraged to include air sports in their curriculum right this is the first one that uh, the schools and colleges will also be encouraged uh, to include these kind of sports like air sports in their curriculum right and uh, as you have as you know that india has the potential to be among the leading nation in the world of air sports why because again we'll come back to the essentials thing that we have a very uh, large geographical expansion we have a very uh, good environment for that why because we have a clear sky uh, for eight to ten months uh, in a year right then we have a youth population who is very attracted towards adventure sports right culture right again the hill areas and all so everything is covered under this thing then uh, like i've said it has a large population especially the youth which is actually attracted towards the adventure sports thing then it has a growing culture for adventure sports and aviation right then if you will enact such kind of law, such kind of policy in our country, then growth of travel, tourism, infrastructure and local employment, especially in Hill area. <coughs> right. So, uh, see, first thing that, uh, first thing I discuss is essential that these kind of things, these kind of sports will happen in hilly areas only. Right. Now, the hilly areas are also, uh, you can deduce that uh, they are being secluded. Right, because they are on the adjoining area, they are the, on uh, they are on the cornermost areas of the country, right? So there are so many difficulties that the people of hilly areas have to face, right? Now, if such kind of sports will get enacted, will develop in those kind of areas, then what will happen? Again, growth of travel eventually will happen. Tourism will take place. Right, it will benefit so much people. Infrastructure will get developed in those areas and the hill area areas itself. Right, then local employment, the people of hill areas will get employment from such kind of air sports activities. Right, so these kind of benefit they can draw from uh, the policy itself if it will be enacted in near future. Right. Now, last topic is this the government initiative. Now, they, these initiatives are related to air sports and sports basically. Right. First one is Khelo India scheme. Then National Sports Development Fund. 
then national sports talent contest scheme then sports authority of india training center scheme then special area game scheme then target olympic podium scheme then khelo india youth game so i just mentioned these kind of initiatives by government of india in order to just uh, they are they, they're just developing such kind of scheme to boost sport in our country right so that's all about the topic itself uh, about the air sports policy again if we summarize the whole topic what you need to understand uh, from an examination point of view is that the main uh, is the features itself of the policy right then the authorities uh, for example in this case it is the air sports federation of india right you have to remember then the ministry it belonged to the minister of civil aviation right then the place that will get benefit again the major thing you need to understand the hill areas but you have to recognize some place also like beer billing in himachal gangtok and sikkim so these kind of places then control zone what is control zone how these uh, which area will be declared as control zone so again popular air sports attraction will get uh, declared then penal action right safety standards then uh, this kind of scheme import of air sports equipment will be free without any import duty right then long term funding how they'll get then gst rate on these kind of equipment 5% or less you have to remember this then objective is very simple then the significance itself and then the government government initiative right so thank you so much for this topic right thank you